Welcome to another episode of PLA with myself, uh, Nick and Bruno. We've got two questions today. Um, one, um, a sort of neighbor law nuisance, and then a second one, more um, agents uh, dealing with uh, tenants and, and mandates and procurement and damages. Um, so we'll do the first question with you, Nick. And this comes from one of our agents. And they have a question saying that they have a tenant uh, that has been having um, some uh, parties throughout the night on weekends. Um, it's, it is in a once, uh, uh, one small bedroom in a garden cottage. Um, so they have about seven people on the premises. And what they've done is they've also crashed into some um, items and garden um, sort of things, uh, damaging uh, and getting aggressive. Uh, with the actual landlords inside the house um, so the landlord now obviously wants him to be out immediately and also pay the rent uh, penalty for a replacement tenant that is found so the agent here is asking what's the right way to then handle the situation okay so uh this it's a, it's a tricky situation okay and they often we often get complaints and clients who come in and say there's a nuisance um, as a result of a tenant or perhaps an owner in a sectional scheme who's having things like parties beyond a, a time period and causing nuisance and causing noise. Now, the real trick with a lot of these, a lot of these circum, uh, circumstances is if you look at the lease agreement, and obviously I, I'm going to assume for the moment that there's a lease agreement that's been entered into between this landlord and this tenant in the question, um, it's very rare that you get a lease agreement or conduct rules, um, but conduct rules a little bit more, that deals with circumstances where there is noise, nuisance, partying beyond a certain hour, okay? which makes the, the question very difficult. Because if there was, for instance, a clause in terms of this lease agreement where you can't you know, party beyond a certain time or a certain times per month or have a certain amount of people on the particular premises, um, th then there is a very easy answer because now you can already lean into the lease agreement to say, well, you've breached it. Let's take an assumption and, and the lease agreement says you can't have more than four people in this small cottage at any one time. If they bring eight people onto the premises, there's a breach. Um, and it seems that the, the writer has said, well, there's been a couple of occasions. So if you've got multiple breaches happening, this makes it easier to cancel the lease agreement, uh, you know, in theory. What's very difficult is if you've got a single circumstance where one thing happened and, and yes, something was broken, there's there's a remedy for that in, in the form of a damage uh, claim that the, the landlord has. Okay, But if it's just a singular event, it's very difficult to now uh, move yourself into a position where you can cancel the lease agreement. In order to cancel the lease agreement, save for provision that's specifically provided within the written lease agreement, you've got to say that the conduct of the tenant is going to the roots of the contract and that therefore you can cancel the lease agreement itself. That's very, very difficult um, for, for a landlord to do in a circumstance where there was perhaps a party, people got out of hand in the circumstances. Um, you know, so it, it's a very difficult question. I, I sympathize with the, the landlord. I understand that circumstance and why they would want um, want to act and, and get the tenant out in the circumstances. But I'm afraid from a legal position, there's there's definitely claims that the landlord has. Um, you know, if, if things have been damaged, um, you know, immediately you've you've got damages claim against your tenants, they're gonna have to remedy that um that particular circumstance. Okay. Um, but cancellation might be very difficult. It's not something that you can just uh, you know, in this forum I can give I can give a, a quick, easy answer to cancellation of the lease agreement, in particular, if there's a written lease agreement on a fixed term. If there's a month-to-month, -month, you know, you're running on a month-to-month -month basis or a verbal lease agreement, give them a month's notice now. Absolutely no problem. You don't even have to tell them why you're doing it. Um, you can just give them the month's notice, but it's very difficult. Um, uh, you know, in, if there's a fixed term lease agreement, there might be a, a nuanced answer, but it would have to take a, a lot of research to do. Um, and then obviously the, the, the second part of that question was the landlord wants them to pay a rent penalty uh, as a result of this cancellation and finding a new tenants in the circumstances. But that rent penalty, which would actually be a damages claim in the circumstances for early cancellation of the lease agreement, that's really going to depend on whether you can cancel the lease agreement effectively in the circumstances. Um, so that also is going to be contingent on, on whether that can or can't happen.
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, there, Nick. Um, I do hope that the agent um, has more uh, clarity with regards to that question.